Good morning. <laughs> Good to see everyone this morning. Um, just a few announcements before we begin our service today. Uh, condiments. We're collecting condiments this month. Ketchup, mustard, uh, Miracle Whip, uh, mayonnaise, relish. What else is that? Just a broad area there. Whatever it takes to build up a sandwich. That's what we're doing for the food pantry. Um, before today, we had collected 134 although I saw a lot of bags come in this morning, so I think we're well beyond that as well. So um, our church does a good job there, just helping the food pantry and keeping things stocked up the best that we can. Um, pew pads, you should find these in your pews. You can please let us know you're here. If you have any new information, this is a great place. Just jot it down, and we'll get that passed along. And um, oh, let me see some other updates I need to give you. Um, what is it? Periodically, we're supposed to tell you where the exit doors are. Okay, any questions? <laughs> there's, there's 21 of them here, so I don't think that would ever be an issue, but we are supposed to announce that. A uh, couple over there, a uh, couple over there, and the back doors, of course. You may want to make a note of that when we get to the offering time. We start making the appeal for money. Uh, know where those doors are. And uh, also give you an update on the uh, air conditioning system. We've had those all service, some Freon put in. Wonderful news, we don't have to replace any of the units. We were braced for some pretty serious expenses, um, but they were able to service everything. Uh, looks good up there. They did find some problems with the duct work and just had to get those braced open and get all those clear, and everything's working well. And the way this worked out, honest, I didn't have anything to do with it. It just worked out that way. The vents are blowing more toward the front. <laughs> True. <laughs> If it's a little warm, we still got some pews down here. Join me, it's nice and cool down here. So, uh, so be honest, that just worked out that way. The vents flow real well up to the front to make it cool. Think they bought it? Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, let me see, uh, it's summertime, so we don't have that many announcements. Things are nice and slow. Uh, twice this past week, I had Carol Priester, uh, check the phone system to make sure they're working. There's not that many phone calls coming in, but I think it's just that quiet time of the year, which is very nice. So um, are there any other announcements that we need to make? I think we have things basically covered there. It's not birthdays, not anniversaries. Breathe. Can we just take a moment to do that? We're here now. We're in the house of our Lord. It's time to put away the anxieties, get those distractions out of your head. We've come here to be with God. We're in God's presence. That's where we find healing. That's where we find our, our soul coming together and building up its strength. We find our wisdom here. We find our courage. All those things that God brings us when we are quiet and still and focused upon our Lord. Let's prepare ourselves to worship. Good morning, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Would all who are able please stand. Holy Spirit, come like a mighty rushing wind and awaken us out of our complacency, our apathy, our difference. Disturb us, for we are to Open the closed gates of our hearts and make us alive again. O Holy Spirit, create among us a mighty Christian revolution and cast the fear of the unknown out of our lives. God has so richly blessed all of us, and I'd like to share my special blessing that happened 38 years ago today without crying. <clears throat> God gave me my precious Julie. And she's the most wonderful daughter that any mother could ever hope to have. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may Please. be seated. It's wonderful to come into the house of the Lord and feel his presence among us. I look forward to that every Sunday, to know that this is God's house and this is where we feel his presence. Join me in this wonderful hymn of Breathe On Me.
learn some new songs once in a while, isn't it? Hey, there was uh, quite a commotion this past Thursday. The Pines Nursing Home in Sussex, England, lost one of its residents. I don't know if you heard about that in the news. They spent the whole day looking, and they couldn't find him. Bernard Jordan just came up missing. And then later that night, after the police been searching the entire area to see what might have happened, they received a phone call from a young vet. And he just called to let him know that Bernard was okay. And the people in the nursing home said, well, he's okay, where is he? Well, he's down here in Quistraham, France. <laughs> What's he doing in France? <laughs> and where's Quistra from? And they said, it's in the region of Normandy. You see, we found out the rest of the story. Bernard Jordan, although he's 89 years old, he was a veteran there on D-Day. And he had left the nursing home that morning with all of his medals pinned to his chest with a jacket over it. I don't think it gets quite that cold in England in June. But anyway, nobody noticed. He went and found a bus and started off. I don't know if he realized there's the English Channel in between England and France, but he was going to get there anyway. Fortunately, a couple young vets saw him and tried to figure out what he was doing. And he explained, they said, we'll get you there, whatever it takes. They got him across the channel. He was ready on Friday morning, and he was there for the festivities. Nothing was going to stop him. He said if it killed him, so be it. Nothing was going to hold him back. Isn't that great, those kind of stories of determination? It's kind of a hero heart to have that kind of courage and just say, I'm going to do it, whatever it takes. He has such a memory that presents such a love in his heart, such a devotion, nothing to hold him back. I think we as Christians, if we understood how important what Christ has done there upon the cross, something far greater than D-Day, if you will, but fought for our sins, fought for our salvation, and he won. And every Sunday we come together to partake of communion. It's that celebration. And we think in our heart that victory is won. Jesus did it. He faced those odds and beat the power of death that we might have everlasting life. And I'm here to celebrate it. And nothing's going to keep me away. I'm going to be here to let our Lord know how precious it is what He has done for us. We're here in the house of God to celebrate, to appreciate what a wonderful victory has been won on our behalf. And we celebrate this in communion. These emblems that represent the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our communion hymn is surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. As we sing this song, we'll be singing it through twice. Let us prepare ourselves for communion with Jesus. Jesus faced that great ominous battle for death and salvation itself. He had to spend time with his disciples to explain one more time that surely they would understand what was at stake. It was during the Passover festival he interrupted things and explained with these two object lessons. He took the bread that was there at the table and he broke it before them. And he taught them that this broken loaf represented his own body that is broken there upon the cross of Calvary. And Jesus took a cup of the fruit of the vine and he gave thanks for it. 
And he teaches us, his disciples, that this cup represents his own blood that is shed there upon the cross of Calvary. It's at Calvary. Everything is atoned for. Everything is won on our behalf. And we might have the assurance of salvation, the confidence to come before our Lord, knowing we're part of his family with no need for fear, no need for anxiety, but simply to receive his love, to receive his forgiveness. Dear Lord, how wonderful it is that your presence is here and in this beautiful altar that we come forward to each Sunday to celebrate our gift of life from you, given through your body and your blood. Thank you, Lord, that you love us this much. May we, in return, love you just as much. Amen.
The day is Pentecost, a very special time in the church, celebrating the time when the church was born, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the promise of the Holy Spirit dwelling within each and every one of us. Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit many times. There's a lot of misunderstanding about the Holy Spirit. Some people get kind of scared about it. We don't want to get too far out there. And some people paralyze themselves by it all. But Jesus means for the Holy Spirit to come upon each and every one of us, to dwell within us, to help us, to guide us along the way, to give us courage, to soften up hard hearts, help us put our priorities together, what's important and what's not really as important as we might think. In our time of our offering is one of those times we realize, well, this is important. This is something that matters for God's kingdom. When I bring my offering, it is done so to honor our Lord God. As we collect our offering this morning, let it be with hearts that are full of courage and desire to serve our Lord God. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in love, awe, and thankfulness. Thank you for all the blessings you give us. We pray that you, we can dedicate these gifts to you and that they may be used to further your kingdom here on earth. Please bless the gifts as well as the givers, for we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Time of prayer, just to update you on a few of our prayer concerns. Uh, Mary Lou Phillips has been back to our church for uh, quite a few years. Uh, she passed away this week, um, so we're very uh, saddened by her parting. Uh, we don't have any details yet on when a memorial service might be, uh, but we'll get that news out as soon as we can. Some of our other prayer needs we have, um, uh, well, Art and Sheila Smith, their house is uh, in need of prayer. Um, Art's sister, Phyllis, uh, is going to have her aorta replaced. This sounds really drastic, doesn't it? But um, medical technology, God bless them for all that. But I um, want to pray for Phyllis as she goes under for that surgery tomorrow. They're planning on doing that. And also for Sheila Smith. Uh, we've been praying for Sheila. She's had a second development. Uh, there was the issue about her heart uh, that was just out of order and it wasn't in sync, I guess the easiest way to explain that. She said every time she would swallow her heart would act up, and it just produced a very unnerving feeling. Uh, so we need to pray for Sheila Smith on that. 
but in the process, she had an issue with her eye. And uh, again, a lot of technical things. Let me just say that she ended up having to be face down um, around the clock for five days. Isn't that it, Art? And um, so you can get up for 10 minutes every hour and walk about, but um, just tough. That is very hard. Can you imagine that? Having to be face down constantly. Um, and she, uh, things are going well so far. There's a gas, two gas bubbles left to help the retina to stay in place and such but anyway you need to pray for Sheila Smith and um, she may need more and if that's the case then she'd have to be perfectly still for 10 days right Our, yeah so there's a lot of stillness there um, if she was a monk that would be ideal where they're used to just being still before God all the time but um, that can be tough so we need to remember Mary um, excuse me Sheila Smith in our prayers and I know there's a lot of other prayer concerns we have and this is a time just talk to God just open up our heart and feel that assurance that we come before our Lord as his children. No need for fear, but just have conversation just to share our hearts with our Lord. Oh Lord, to know you in all of your glory, all of your power, and all of your love and compassion. What a wonderful blessing it is to be part of your family, to be part of what you're doing in this world. I pray, Father, we can develop strength of our spirit to be able to discern you at every step, that great awareness to know that you're there all around us, even within us, Lord, to continue working out your perfect will in our life that we might know more of you personally, and not that you might be an abstract figure somewhere far away, but intimately to have you as our Lord, our Father, to have you as our spiritual indwelling to work out a great transformation within us and how we need it, Lord, how we need to be revived by you and to know that power of your fullness, Lord, and how that changes hearts and brings wholeness and, and healing and how we need that more and more. Father, we lift up to you our prayer concerns. I Pray you'd be with the family of Mary Lou Phillips to bring them comfort, bring them assurance. Pray you'd be with Millie Sparks and be with Judy Jordan and watch over them, Father, and guide them along the way. Bill Phyllis Powell, we lift up to you as having uh, aorta replacement surgery. And Father, that sounds drastic, but Lord, be with her. Give her a confident heart that is assured of your care and that you are there for her. And Father, we lift up to you Sheila Smith and just a real hard time that she's dealing with, Lord, First with the heart issues, and that's very difficult. And now with her eye, Father, I pray you would intervene in this situation to come to her. Even this moment, oh God, come to her in her room and to be there, to bring her assurance, to bring her patience. Let her rest assured. Father, just keep her mind focused upon you and, and hopeful and confident that you're working this all out, Father. And all in due time, things will come together in a marvelous way. Let her faith and trust in you be very strong. Father, in all things, we long to see you more, to learn about trust, to learn about believing, and to follow you with courage, no matter where that leading may take us. Lord, all things are deserving of you. All praise we lift to you for your glory. We worship you, O oh God. We worship no one else in this world but you and you alone. Be glorified, Father, in all that we lift to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.